What's up? Coach Dan Blewett here. And in today's video, we're going to actually go over a Twitter poll that I took about the question, what should you throw in a 3-2 count? So for pitchers, pitch selection is obviously huge. I am a huge advocate of players calling their own games. And to do that, we have to think through situations as much as we can. And there's so much in baseball that's uncertain and very situational and very uh, personal, personally dependent. So what I might throw in a given situation might be completely different than what someone else throws in that exact same situation. So let me read, and I'm obviously going to put this up right here, but here was my tweet. Uh, the poll got 100 votes, and it was basically if there's a 3-2 count with the bases loaded and the tying runs on second, righty versus right. So you're a righty pitcher, righty hitter's up. It's the eighth inning, and this guy is a dangerous hitter. So I've got three options, wipeout slider, an average changeup, and an above average fastball. So in parentheses with a slider, it says 40%. That's the percent chance that you're going to throw for a called strike. So for wipeout slider, it's 40%. For the average change up, 55%. And your above average fastball, 70%. So the poll was really interesting. 44.6% of you, which is 45 humans, decided that the wipeout slider was best. Only 16.8% chose the change up and 34% chose the fastball with 4% of people just wanting to see the results and not, not actually vote. So let me go through all three choices and I'll give you my rationale for why you might pick each of one. And my, my choice in this situation, I'll actually fill you in at the end. So the case for the wipeout slider is this. So number one, if you're only gonna throw this pitch for a strike, call the strike 40% of the time, the thing we have to factor into is that the, the a slider will break out of the zone, obviously. So you don't have to throw it for a called strike 40% of the time. This is the only pitch of the three that's going to be in the zone than out of the zone. So the 40% is a little bit deceptive because it's going to bump up because you could throw a slider that starts in the bottom of the strike zone and breaks out. Obviously, that's the beauty of a breaking ball. The downside with this, with this, the fact that it's a breaking pitch on 3-2 is if you spook the hitter at all, meaning he sees spin, when we know on 3-2, hitters are expecting fastball. That's the one of the dangers of throwing a breaking ball 3-2. Hitters are very confident they're getting a fastball. So they get a little spooked when they see spin, so whether it's a curveball or a slider. And if they see that, a lot of times they'll either flinch and take, and now you have to throw it for a called strike or they walk. Especially with curveballs, that's a big concern. It's less of a concern with sliders because they look like fastballs a lot better they're a lot easier to throw in the middle of the zone they don't have the big break that can actually like make a hitter kind of change his eye level and they don't typically look as different out of the hand as a breaking ball or as a curveball so obviously the slider has that advantage to it the problem is when you have a wipeout slider and depending on the level you're at so this is there's a lot of ambiguities about this question um, depending on the level you're at if you've had a really nasty slider and you're like 16 it might be really tough for your catcher to stick balls in the zone. That's another consideration where if this is 3-2 and you do throw a, a borderline ball strike slider, your catcher might make that pitch a ball. It's pretty, it's honestly, it's, it's pretty likely that he'll drag that out of the zone with him. So again, it, it just increases the fact that you might have to throw that pretty center cut to get an actual called strike three if the hitter doesn't help you in swing, which he is pretty likely. So the, the, the big pros and cons with the slider, especially a nasty one, is that even though you're less likely to throw for a called strike, you're much more likely to get that swing and miss result that you probably want or just very, very weak contact. So even though your risk is higher because you have a much higher chance of walking him than any of the other pitches, your reward is also probably the highest on this pitch. We know that if you throw a pretty decent swingable slider, 3-2, you're going to get a strike out a lot of the time and you're going to get weak contact the rest of the time, if not a foul ball. So kind of high risk, kind of high reward. I'm not sure that's the pitch I would choose and call. Number two, the average changeup. You're going to throw this for a strike 55% of the time. Again, this was sort of my arbitrary, but I think this, this pattern kind of follows what a typical amateur pitcher might throw or even a pro guy. You're going to throw your fastball probably 70% of the time if you're successful, 55, and then it's going to kind of decrease your second best pitch and then your third best pitch. So with your changeup, I love change-ups when you're behind the count, and especially 3-2, because number one, they look like fastballs. They're always much straighter than a breaking ball. They're not going to have this very different trajectory. So if you throw a change-up on the heart of the, or just on the white of the plate at all, especially 3-2, you're almost guaranteed to get a swing. What what hitter takes a change-up that's on the white of the plate, 3-2? Because they're not going to get fooled by spin. They're going to see fastball and then they're going to be ready to swing. That's the beauty of a changeup, right? Now, obviously, like the, the modern changeup that has a lot of heavy sink and run, which is the version I teach here on my YouTube channel, um, 
that one has a little more of like a break signature to it. So that one can be a little bit different. But in general, if we're just assuming that your chain up doesn't have a ton of sync, like Felix Hernandez or Steven Strasberg kind of sync, then you can be pretty confident that if you do just chuck that over the plate, you're probably either getting a strikeout or a weak ground ball and the threat is over. Because what hitter is looking change up 3-2? None of them. Like no one's looking. And if your chain up is even average, it's still pretty tough to barrel up average change ups unless you leave them really high up in the zone. So the change up, A, you've got a higher strike percentage than the slider. B, um, you're going to get a very high swing percentage because you're not going to spook the hitter. He's not going to see spin. He's not really going to see any difference. So if you do throw it in the strike zone, you're almost guaranteed a swing on an action count like 3-2. And then, again, if you just throw a decent changeup, I think you get the result that you want, weak contact or a swing and miss. So my choice, eh, I'll hold out to the end. Lastly, your above-average fastball. So if you have an above-average fastball, number one, you should always trust it. Number two, this is probably a good decision to throw an above-average fastball 3-2 depending on how dangerous this guy is and, and how you feel about it. So, and what, what swings he's taken to get you to three, two. So at three, two, you've gotten a lot of info so far. You've seen at least five pitches because, you know, maybe this is the, the ninth pitch of the bat. He's had five, three, two or four, three, two foul balls. We don't really know, but at this point, three, two fastballs, they take some guts because hitters know they're coming. Essentially they're ready to swing at the fastball. They're on the fastball timing. Most of the time, there's a lot of foul balls on three, two counts. So, I mean, if this is a really, this, this situation, eighth inning, three, two count, bases loaded, a great hitter up, tying run on second, that's like a, essentially like the biggest moment in the game where if you have the stones to throw an off speed pitch, you probably win this. If you can throw for a strike, you're a loser. If you throw a ball, not in the sense that you're a bad person, you're just, you lose if you throw a ball. Um, but the fastball probably gets you hurt, even if it's above average. If it's way above average, like we're talking like two standard deviations above what's normal, like you throw fuel, then you still probably go with your fastball and maybe just ride it up a little bit out of the zone, maybe throw the letters. But I don't like the fastball as much in this situation. But the caveat is bases are loaded. So if you walk this guy on a change or a slider, you're going to have to hear from some people about it. That said, eighth inning, one of their best hitters, man. Eh. So my, my take, you probably, I, I kind of gave it away. My take on this in this situation is probably the change up. The thing with your second or your, your second best off speed pitch or your, just your third or fourth best pitch. So in this situation, your wipeout slider is probably your best pitch, your fastball, and then your change up, right? So this is your third best pitch. So the old saying is don't get beat on your third best pitch. And I agree with that. However, we're still trying to figure out the probabilities that we get the outcome that we want and we can have a decent chance of not walking this guy while making a pretty gutsy pitch. It's a gutsy pitch to throw a three to anything other than a fastball with the bases loaded. That just takes some stones. And so if we're weighing the risk and reward, there's a lot more risk of walking this guy throwing the slider for a decent amount more reward, but probably not that much. Because again, if you execute a change up three two or you execute a slider 3-2, the result's probably very similar. It's just probably a little more certain if you throw a nasty, like, Andrew Miller-type slider, right? But the outcome's pretty darn certain with either breaking ball or e either off-speed pitch 3-2. So for me personally, weighing the risk and the rewards, the fact that, it, you know, that if you do walk this guy, now you still have another out to get. You still have the bases loaded. The game's tied. You're in deep trouble. So obviously you'd be feeling out, can I throw this pitch for a strike today? Like... Of course, I already gave you the strike percentages. We're trying to remove some of the ambiguity, but the average changeup, I think, is the winner because you're going to get the result that you want. You have a higher chance of not walking him, and you still have a very high probability of getting your, you know, big nuts kind of out. So that's my take. What did you think? Um, I appreciate you participating in this, in this poll. I'm going to put more of these out on my Twitter, but I want to share kind of my long-winded explanation of this here on YouTube. So if you have your own take on this, feel free to leave it in the comments below and subscribe to my Twitter. And uh, I'll see you here on the next time for the next video and for the next poll.